Empowered people make informed decisions that lead to living a life without regret. This is Sarah Kaki and Shauna Woods from Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and this is the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. Welcome to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. I'm Sarah Kaki with Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and I'm joined by our very own managing partner, Shauna Woods. Shauna, today we're going to cover a topic that I think is close to your heart, and that is, are you a single parent or are you an only parent? So we know, Shauna, that you raised your amazingly beautiful, intelligent daughter, Sarah, all on your own. Did you do it as a single parent or did you do it as an only parent? If we're being technical, I did it as both, but I considered myself an only parent. And there's a big difference. A single parent is a designation of are you married or are you single? But what we really think about it, when we think about single parent, is someone who's gone through a divorce or perhaps was never married. But you have two parents who are involved to a certain extent. Used to be that it was very traditional that the woman would be have the children primarily and the father would have them every other weekend, Friday to Sunday. But that's changed so drastically. And now we see a lot of shared custodial relationships where you have your children 50% of the time and the other parent has them 50% of the time. Or even if the other parent doesn't have them 50% of the time, they have an extended weekend, right? Mm -hmm. But they're also there for the extracurriculars, right? They're participating in the school plays and they're helping with the Christmas presents and they're throwing birthday parties and they're taking vacations, right? Parenting, although it may be primarily on a single parent. When you say single parent, we usually think of the person that the children live with most. Right. A single parent has another parent to bounce ideas off of. Because you always get to that point where you don't know what to do in a situation. Uh, A single parent has someone who can help them financially. Right. A single parent has someone then who is really bearing some of the burden of parenting these children and growing in and into adulthood. Now, I was an only parent. The biological father of my daughter was not involved at all. And by his choice, right, this was, I really haven't talked a whole lot about this before, but I had my daughter very young, as I've stated, and The idea was if we were not going to be a family unit, this person decided not to be a part of anything. And that wasn't on the table for this person. Right. That was not going to happen. And it happens a lot. And this is probably how it happened to me too. It happens a lot when the other parent has addiction issues or alcoholism issues or even mental health issues. Sometimes I'll roll a bit to one. I do think that there are times when you are an only parent when the other parent is still involved, but you also have to parent them because they can't get out of that addiction or their alcoholism. Or they're just not a functioning, mature adult. And you are fighting so hard for your child to have a relationship with that parent. Mm -hmm. So you're not willing to give up on that for the sake of your child. So you do everything for your child to have that relationship with the other parent which turns into the other parent being your adult child. Yes. So that you can make keep a relationship between your child and their other parent. And that's a really hard decision to make because I do have people tell me sometimes, oh, I wish that the parent, my co-parent wasn't involved because I'm having to deal with all these issues, all these hard issues. And they don't really have a counterpart on the other side as much as someone else. They're simply emotionally and sometimes financially supporting. Right. And that's a really hard place to be. How does it affect you and how does it affect your children is something that you really have to do a deep dive into your heart to think about how am I going to display or portray the other parent to my child. I did the best that I could of never saying anything negative about her biological father, never talking you know, about him, never calling him words. She came into the, her ideas about this person on her own. I think it's extremely important, even when you're an only parent, to continue to do that. We may really want to say, well, what a POS, right? 
how dare this person step out and not even financially support or not, you know, be here for any of that. But you have to keep in your mind that your children biologically are half of this person's DNA. Yeah. So when you say so-and-so is a POS, what you just told your child is you're half a POS, right? And especially a young child, they still see themselves as part of a parent. They do. The other thing I really, really strongly urge people to be aware of, and I wasn't when I was younger, is something called enmeshment. Hmm. Are you not familiar? Yeah, I've never heard this. Okay. So enmeshment with your children is when they are so close, closely emotionally tied to you that they are taking on your feelings, mm-hmm. your thoughts, your being, right? And this happens a lot when the other parent is a, a mentally ill or is a person with addiction issues is you may not be telling them that person's bad, but they are seeing what you're going through and you're allowing them to see what you're going through. Therefore, they become part of your emotions and they take those on and portray them instead of being able to develop their own emotions and thoughts about the the issue, right? They also may, and this is really hard, become your savior. Yeah. And your protector. Right. And it feels good, you know. It does. <laughs> it feels great. Finally, somebody has your back. Somebody has your back that somebody shouldn't be your 10-year-old. Mm-hmm. And it's really important to be able to remind them, thank you. I am so appreciative that you want to come and protect me. But the best thing you can do for me is to be a kid. Yeah. The best, th- I've got this. I'm the grown-up of the situation. You go be a child. And I'll be honest, I wasn't there when I had my They are so young. I was very, very young. And her and I have worked out a lot of these issues that it caused later on in life where she had to draw boundaries and say, you know what, I'm a grown up now and I'm not going to feel the same way you do. And, yeah. you know, we were often called the Gilmore Girls, <laughs> which was wonderful. And we are still extremely close. But one of the most powerful things I ever, I think I did is at one point in time say, I'm okay. You can go live your life now. Wow. That sounds like what every adult child probably wants to hear. Yes. And it's really important to try to practice this when children are young. There are several cases that we have where it is heart-wrenching because of the extreme mental illnesses or the extreme addictions of someone who you're trying to co-parent with and you do your best. And that's really all that you can do. But I do recommend a book that I think is really just very powerful. It's called How to Be an Adult in Relationships. I think it's really important for people to listen to and take to heart when you are trying to be an only parent. Because there is a very deep tie to when there are only two people or maybe just you and children in the household. And it's you constantly. You're not talking to other adults. You're talking to your children. And you're probably going to their schools. And you're probably going to their extracurriculars. And you're engaging with them and trying to on their level. Right. Which brings you to a position of relating to them on that level. You need to be able to take that step back. It's also a really good book for children who grew up in this situation to listen to. Because... A lot of people who grew up in situations where they had a mentally ill parent or they had an absentee parent or maybe both, um, they adulted themselves at a very young age. But in relationships, sometimes they tend to retract and be immature. Yes. Because they are constantly seeking that parent that they never had. Wow. And they're, they're going outward in other relationships seeking for that. So Shauna, let me ask you this. This is an observation I've made, not based on any clinical data. We're not psychologists, therapists, or psychiatrists, but we work with a lot of families that go through these issues. But you may be able to validate this from your own personal experience. I find that single parents, where there is the other parent is still in the picture and is involved, still have the mental capacity or the energy or maybe even the time to experience their anger, their frustrations, 
perhaps even their resentment and bring it to the forefront, fight it out, let it out, release it, and hopefully move on. Maybe not always, depending on how bad the the co-parenting situation or how good it is. But the only parent, a lot of times when I talk to moms or dads who are the only parent and the other parent's not even in the picture, they don't even seem to have the time or have never had the time or the energy or the mental bandwidth to really even sort out how angry they may be or how frustrated they are. Like I'll give you an example. You can talk to an only parent and they're just telling you what the data, like they're very telling you, this is how it is. You know, me and my son, we live here, then we moved here. You, you're not hearing a story of any conflict, a story of any drama. They're just giving you facts and data on their life and now what they need because they're so go, go, go and everything else is repressed. Whereas the single parent, they are telling you stories and then she did this and then he did this and then he didn't show up and then she showed up and I'm so mad and I'm so done. And it's a lot of emotions. It's a lot of feelings. It's a lot of conflict related stories before you get to them telling you, and here's what I need next. So my observation just as, as an attorney in this area of law is the parent, the only parent doesn't even have time to even think about the other person. What I see about myself when I had my child and when I see other parents who are only parents, you are in constant survival mode. Mm -hmm. And when you are in a survival mode, you are not in a growth mode because you're getting your all just to make sure there's food on the table and your child can go to ballet and you've got a roof over your head because you've got to work and you've got to take care of your child and you don't get the break. I have a lot of people come to me and they say, I cannot imagine being without my child for a few days here and there. And I really try to counsel them. You're going to need to pray be without your child here and there. If you have a parent on the other side who is willing and able and capable of coming in and helping you parent, accept that, not just for the children, primarily for the children, but not just for the children, but for yourself and your own sanity. And you're able to grow beyond who you are now and be on that survival mode. So I am going to do what you always do to me and we do for each other. I'm going to challenge it for a second. You know how we always say working moms versus stay home moms. Yes. Working moms claim the stay home moms have it easier and stay home moms claim the working mom has it easier. Mm -hmm. And it's the grass is greener on the other side, depending on who you talk to. I think there, I think there's also a little bit of that here because you also hear this from the single parent who's dealing with a complete horrible parent on the other side that is still in the picture. And you said, I just wish I could take him out of the picture. I wish I could just take her out of the picture and completely parent this on my own. Then it would all be under my control. At least I'd be the one responsible. My child would not have to put up with this. And then you have the only mom that's saying, or the only parent that's saying, man, if there was just somebody else that could just give me a few hours in the day, if there was another adult in this person's life that cared about them as a parent. So I think it's just interesting because there probably is a, on some level of grass is greener on the other side. Now, I think for the sake of a child, if any time you could have two functioning adults, right, healthy adults that are in the picture, always better than one. That is all studies have shown. Uh, but what I think it's interesting is if you have a dysfunctional parent in the picture versus an only parent, where is the grass greener? And I'm not sure I draw that distinction entirely. Yeah. I do think there are times when I hear these nightmarish stories about trying to put, you know, a child somewhere you know is good for them or the other parent fighting you on that, that I was grateful that I was the person making the choices and that was the only person that had to make those choices. I was grateful for that. I got all the Christmases. I got all the birthdays. You know, that was wonderful for me. Yeah. What I would counsel people when they have this difficult person on the other side is can they be rehabilitated? 
And I've got a client who is a longtime client. I have been with this client since one of his children was born. Mm. And they're now grown and gone. So I've been with this client a really long time. And he did what I would say was the prime example of what to do because on the other side was someone who has a very strong addiction problem, who comes in sobriety and goes out of sobriety. He did a fantastic job of being able to incorporate her as a mom for the children without putting them in danger. And that's a really hard line to walk because he could have at any point, the court would have supported him being the only parent. He chose not to, and he chose to make it work. It doesn't always. And I'm not saying that if you can't make it work and this person on the other side is just so out of control that you have to let them go because sometimes that is it. Sometimes you have to cut it off for the benefit of the jury. Yes, in a perfect world, you have two completely healthy, capable human adults taking care of children, but we don't live in that perfect world. So you have to take a look at your situation and say, how is it I can make it the best, not for me, but for my child? Thank you, Shauna. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. If you'd like to learn more, go to atlantadivorcelawgroup.com forward slash resources. 